go. Okay, um, we're here at the Shaker Auto Group and we're going to uh, talk about price. So again, we've had this come out several different times with several different scenarios. Well, what if, the, you know, if our competition says this? What if the prospects want that? What if this? What if that? He here's the thing. Let me explain to you the way that, that price works. Um, to give you an analogy, anybody here know who Maslow is? Show of hands. <coughs> Pan the room. Yeah, come in there. Yeah, right. that's dog. Yes, yeah, you know, Maslow, okay. He had something, you know, no, that's that's Pavlov. That's, Pavlov. that's right. That's Pavlov. Yeah, Maslow. Was here. Maslow. Yes. Yeah. You threw me off for a second there. Sorry. Yeah. Maslow has the, the hierarchy of needs. He had that what, oh, the yeah. whole triangle thing. Yeah. Love. And basically, what what he said was is that there's different levels of, of needs, starting with the basic of, of food, shelter, you know, water, air. How about air? That's a good one, right? Right. And then it, the last one, which is on Maslow's hierarchy chart, is self actualization, feeling loved and appreciated. Now think about this, if you're in a third world country in the stick somewhere, do you think somebody, you know, do you think that's really a priority about, hey, you, you're, you don't really match, and mm, I'm not really feeling you today, versus air. See the difference in, in, in priority? So in price, you gotta understand, nowadays, in 2012 going to 2013, what are most people um, really focused on? Obviously, you can't get anywhere, you know, or see anything, you know, without kind of getting one of those strips streams about the economy. The election was kind of consuming things and this, that, and healthcare and the fiscal cliff, and you've got all this stuff going on. Is that, is that a fair statement or am I making this up? Okay, so there's a lot of angst about the economy right now. So that's one problem we have to overcome. Second is that the reputation of automotive dealerships isn't pristine. And neither are, for that matter, cops and priests. I'm not going there, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it's a righteous, analogy, but my point being is that there is a negative uh, perception of car dealerships, etc. Yes? Yes. yes? yes. Okay. Now, let's get into the other fact that this is the second largest item that the average person in your demographic is going to buy next to a home. Is that also correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Here's one of my favorite ones with price. People don't understand value. Okay? I'm one of those stupid people. I, I, I'm, just, I'm on video. I'm one of them. When I bought a very expensive SUV, myself, ah, I don't, you know, it's got a nice little, I know what kind of car it is, it's got a warranty, I don't really care. I didn't even have them reach under, you know, show me the hood. Most people, when you do a product presentation, minus enthusiasts, minus truck people, I'm just saying a big bulk of normal people, they start, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. And they don't really get what they're seeing or what you're selling them on. Am I correct for the, the, the bulk of people? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, so now, how can you engage somebody that's got all this stress, fears, um, doubts, frustrations, all that stuff, and they, they can't really articulate value through all this other stuff because they don't even understand what's going on. It's like electricity. I see the lights on, but how does electricity work? Anybody here knows how electricity works? Rhetorical question. My point, how do you understand the value of this? There's confusion there. Everybody still with me? I lose anybody yet, right? So then this is all going on with them. And then you've got lead source providers that say, click here for price quote. Click here for price quote. Click here to get the bottom line price. And everybody's fighting on the internet with invoice deals. And you've got true cars. And you've got all these invoice prices. And you've got all this other stuff. So what do you think that we breed? What do you think that we cultivate? What do you think that we're creating? Everybody? Price, price people. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So once you understand the psychology and the background of why people are like, give me the best price, 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 price. Here's what I'm gonna say, I'm looking at the camera for this one. Price is only relevant with the absence of value. Price is only relevant with the absence of value. So now, how do you handle price? Now that I've explained to you clearly what is the current situation with price. Well, you can handle price one or two ways. You can either react to it, or you can be proactive to it. Can anybody guess what's the best way? Proactive. Pro Hell yes. Proactively is the best way to do it. Well, what's the difference? You you hope, you dodge, you deflect, you dip, dive, you weave, you know, and then you just you ready to sign right now? And you're like, er, no, why not? I want to get the best price. Damn it! Now you got to react to that, and that's an objection. Okay? There's a big difference between objections and expectations. This is what I was teaching with the deal with synergy process. I want to engage price when I'm ready. When I ask the qualified question, quick question: Have you ever purchased a vehicle online before? No. Okay. What were you looking to accomplish by going online? I'm looking for the best price. I know that most people are going to start with that. So I want to introduce it when I'm ready. You have to be prepared when you're on the phones. 
you know, the step one, two, three, and four, and even five to some degree, there's no ninja deal with synergy, you know, mystique. It's just phone etiquette 101. My program really begins in step five of the 10 step process, like halfway through it, when I ask, have you ever purchased a vehicle line before? If they say no, I know most people are gonna say price. I'm gonna be conditioned, now follow me on this, this is mostly for you all. When I turn around and say, there you go. When I, when I turn around and say to you all, right? Let's go. Let's go, Chris, let's do this like live. Okay. Have you ever purchased a vehicle line before? No. Okay, just so I know what we look to accomplish by the line. Okay, this is a Toyota TQFM response. How about this? If I wasn't able to get you the absolute best deal, I would never expect to buy a vehicle from me, okay? Okay. All right, now, with that being said, besides price, what else is important to you in deciding where you're going to purchase your next vehicle? Stop. This is important. Very, 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 very important. I did not do this. Keep the camera focused for a second. I did not say this. Have you ever purchased a vehicle online before? No. What were you looking to accomplish by going online? Uh, best price. Well, besides price, what else is important to you? That's called a deflective rebuttal. That's the old school trainers used to teach that. I asked you a direct question, you answered me, and then I just basically said, don't care, and I just moved out of the way. I actually responded to you when I used the TQF, and that's a Toyota response, actually, when I said, how about this? If I wasn't able to get you the absolute best deal, I would never expect to buy a vehicle from me, okay? And you're like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I'm not stupid. I'm not okay, now that I've, I've, I've felt that I've met your expectation, <laughs> I'm gonna find out what else is important. This is what happens. A lot of people don't even know if you guys are doing this. It's not just asking, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough to just ask the one question, what we look to accomplish by going online? Whatever you get and then just make the appointment. Because you are not exceeding their expectations. You're not even fully qualifying. That number is crazy, can you look at that? Over 82% of people are gonna buy somewhere else, why? Because we didn't identify what else is important to them. All we did, is hit the surface issue. All we did was pull the weed out. We didn't, turn, I'm just, we didn't go down and get the root out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when you handle price, price is just the initial aspect of things. So again, when I ask, what are you looking to accomplish by going online? Price, okay, I hit it with the rebuttal. A Phil Felt found one, another oldie but goodie. You know, price is you know, important to me too. As a matter of fact, other people felt the same way that we do. That's why they go online, blah, 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 blah. Again, when you hit the rebuttals, I'm gonna draw these these tomorrow. But once you turn around and you hit that first one, when you hit the, the response, you want to make sure that you're what's called an assumptive transition. You're assuming that when you respond with the rebuttal, that whatever you just said, answer their question. Now you're going to go on to the next part. It's not like a close. There's a big, there's a big difference of implementing a rebuttal versus closing. You know how we're all trained. If you go into you know, a, a deal and you're trying to close a deal, first person that talks loses, all that crazy stuff. That's not how it works when you implement a rebuttal. Think about it, you ever see a volley, volleyball match, you know, a tennis match, a ping pong match? Okay, it's awesome when there's a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's not very fun for a tennis match when you don't have that. You know what I mean, when you just spike someone in the head, it's funny as hell, but it's not a good tennis match. So it's okay to have conversation with your prospect. It's okay to be able to go back and forth. It's absolutely okay to do that. But what are we trying to do on the phones? First, identify wants, wishes, expectations. We're talking about price. I felt that I've met that by going through the, the rebuttal, right? Now I'm gonna find out what else is important to them. And that's still not enough, because let's just say it's convenience. Let's go to there. So what else, besides price, what else is important to you in deciding where you're gonna purchase that next vehicle? Uh, just something close to home. Close to home? Because you don't want to travel and too far away to buy your vehicle? Right. Okay, I still got a minute. Um, well. How about this? I don't know if you know this, but we can actually deliver that vehicle free of charge to home or office. So, you know, distance is never an issue here at ABC Motors. Does that sound sounds, fair? Sounds good. Okay, now, let me make sure I understand you correctly, Teresa. The two most important things I heard you say was pricing and, and convenience. Is that correct? Yes. Well, let me assure you that those two uh, things are the most basic things you can expect by doing business with us here at ABC Motors. Fair enough? Sure. Transition. Can I tell you what else we do to go above and beyond for our internet customers like yourself? Yeah. Stop for a second. 